following statement contains vast amounts of sarcasm. And a little bit of truth. There are two kinds of people who do astrophotography. People with little money who gather lots of knowledge to get great images. And there are people with a lot of money who just want to try it out and buy stuff that just doesn't get the job done. I recently watched an unboxing video where I had that feeling. The guy presented a huge tracking mount and pulled out a gigantic refractor with a focal length of, I think over 900 millimeters. And he was like, I got this amazing thing, an achromatic doublet. <laughs> Let me tell you a thing or two about field correctors. Hi Astroaddicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astroaddict. I saw a request in the comments that I should do a basic tutorial on field correctors and coma correctors. I know that the question of your first telescope is not easily answered, but I think no one will disagree when I say that you should pick something easy, sturdy and reliable. Sorry Dobsonians, but the refractor is a pretty cool thing. For short focal lengths, building a telescope with glass lenses is the best option. But one has to keep in mind that there are different types of refractors. Time to get sciency. A pair of two lenses, a crown and a flint, make a basic magnifying contraption called an achromatic doublet. But nothing in this world is perfect. There are three major problems every lens has. A beam of white light is made out of tons of different wavelengths. A simple collective lens focuses all these colors in the same spot. Almost. The refractive index of a lens varies with wavelength. This basically means that every color has its own focus point. If you want to observe planets, deep sky targets and the moon, an achromatic doublet is a good choice. The ratio from price to focal length is reasonably low and you need long focal lengths if you want to view Jupiter or something. The chromatic aberration is usually corrected by the eyepieces you can buy. But if you suddenly attach a camera on the back of your scope, bright stars will appear blotchy and the color on the edges will depend on your focus. Small stars can appear as annoying red dots and if you image something in the plane of the Milky Way, you will not have much fun. Especially if the collimation is off, resulting in a colored coma around the stars. The solution? A coma corrector. A small extension tube, containing maybe one to three lenses, which gets the stupid color rays in the place where they should be. If you want to purchase a coma corrector, be careful. A coma corrector is not compatible with every telescope. Gather some information from the manufacturer on which one you should use for your scope. But why put an extra lens in the back? when you can put it in the front. If you place an extra lens in the front, the chromatic aberration will be gone. These contraptions are called apochromatic triplets and are very important for astrophotography, but they are more expensive. Now we have everything we need to get error-free images. The light beams have the same focus point now, right? Almost. The focus of the light does not only depend on the wavelength, it does also depend on the distance to the optical axis. Two parallel beams of light traveling at a different height through a lens don't have the same focus point. You will see it, the stars in your images on the edges will be deformed. It's either a barrel or fisheye look and it drags your beautiful round stars into a sad looking... Uh, the solution? A field flattener. This device, similar to the chroma corrector, adds another lens, which corrects the uneven field of view. But they are even more difficult to use than the chroma corrector. Field flatteners have to be made specifically for your type of scope. And you need to achieve the right distance between the chroma corrector's optical axis and your camera sensor. A guide on how to achieve the correct distance to your sensor should be in the manual for every field corrector. If necessary, squeeze this information out of the manufacturer. This tongue twister is not a problem for telescope, since the aperture is round. But I still want to explain it. If two beams of light travel through a lens which is ellipse-shaped, the horizontal and vertical parts of the light will have different focus points. People who wear glasses may know this problem. My glasses are only made to counteract the third degree astigmatism in my eyes. If you are curious on how that looks, You can imagine how stars in the moon look to me, even with the glasses. 
If you own a classic APO triplet with a focal length of more or less 800 millimeters, you will see a problem with very big targets. I saw this issue for the first time while imaging the elephant trunk nebula. I was not able to include the whole nebula in the picture because it is just too big. The solution would be a focal reducer. Multiplying your focal length with 1.5 to 1.8 allows you to image a wider field of view and it shortens your focal distance. Slap it on the back of your scope and enjoy more stuff in your images. Again, compatibility with your scope is important. Field flatteners can also act as a reducer. If you read the term flattener reducer, it's two in one. My field flattener is not a reducer, which I found out the hard way, because Andromeda Galaxy was still too big. If you don't want to attach anything to the back of your scope, you can also go with a quadruplet. No need for a coma corrector or field flattener, but as always, these things are much more expensive. Or you could simply buy a mirror telescope. With increasing focal length, a refractor gets way too heavy and way too expensive. Mirror telescopes like a schmidt cassegrain or a Ritchie Gretchen with a focal length of more than 1300 millimeters are the better choice for a galaxy season and they are way cheaper. I own a classic APO triplet with dedicated field flattener for the big targets in the sky. And I also have a 6 inch Ritchie Gretchen telescope, no need for a flattener for galaxy season. Refractors are reliable, simple and easy to use, but they can't look that deep into our night sky. Mirror telescopes can be a bit tricky to use, but they can view way more stuff than you can imagine. I was able to test the new tri narrowband filter together with the Ritchie Gretchen telescope. But, lesson learned, don't use a nebula filter on galaxies. I hope I did not miss any important information. As always, feel free to leave comments and feedback down below. Galaxy season has started and there's much cool stuff to photograph. Until then, clear skies and may the night be with us.